Archaeologists and Egyptologists claim that they were tombs for the pharaohs, and yet no Egyptian pharaoh was ever found in a pyramid in Egypt. For thousands of years, the Great Pyramid of Giza has stood as one of the greatest wonders of the ancient world. It is a monument that speaks of the genius of an ancient civilization and the boundless ambition of its rulers. But despite centuries of exploration, research, and fascination, it has guarded its secrets well. And now, after decades of speculation and countless failed attempts, the impossible has happened. A hidden chamber, once thought to be a myth, has been discovered deep inside the pyramid, its contents locked away for thousands of years. What was hidden here, and why was it kept secret for so long? They are making their way to what is called the Grand Gallery, which can only be reached after walking up a 200-foot-long passageway. Join us as we delve deep into the heart of Egypt's most famous monument to uncover the truth behind this astonishing discovery. The King and Queen Chambers. Deep inside the majestic Great Pyramid of Giza lies a mysterious and awe-inspiring room called the King's Chamber, a true masterpiece of ancient Egyptian design that continues to amaze historians and visitors. The walls and ceiling are made from massive granite blocks, each one a confirmation of the incredible skill of the builders. To reach this chamber, you have to pass through the Grand Gallery, a long, sloping hallway that stands a towering 8.6 meters tall and stretches for an impressive 47 meters. According to Egyptologists, moving these enormous stones was no easy task. The red granite blocks were quarried from Aswan, located over 800 kilometers away, and somehow transported all that distance to the pyramid site. The chamber itself is quite large, measuring about 10.5 meters long, 5.2 meters wide, and nearly 6 meters high. It showcases the Egyptians' advanced knowledge of both materials and construction techniques. At the heart of the chamber lies a striking red granite sarcophagus, which is believed to have been built for Pharaoh Khufu. Yet, in a strange twist, no human remains were ever found inside it. The sarcophagus shows signs of wear and age, hinting at its long history. Above the chamber, a series of relieving chambers were constructed to help spread out the immense weight of the pyramid, ensuring that the structure remained stable, an incredible example of ancient engineering. The Grand Gallery, which leads you to the King's Chamber, is a marvel of design on its own. Its walls narrow as you ascend, creating a visually stunning effect, while the use of limestone for the walls and heavier stones for the ceiling shows the careful planning involved in building such a massive structure. The attention to detail in this chamber is truly breathtaking, showcasing the brilliance of the ancient Egyptians' architectural vision. As you stand in the king's chamber, it's impossible not to feel awe at the precision and effort that went into constructing this monumental room. It is a symbol of ancient Egypt's extraordinary ability to build structures that continue to fascinate and inspire us thousands of years later. Some experts believe that the Queen's Chamber, also located within the Great Pyramid, played an important role in ancient rituals related to the Pharaoh's journey to the afterlife. The Grand Gallery itself may have been more than just a passageway. So this is the Grand Gallery. As you can see, it's pretty massive. It may have been part of the process of constructing the chamber, or even served a special purpose in these sacred ceremonies. Its large stone steps and various slots along the walls suggest that it had a deeper significance than we fully understand today. Now, let's look into another intriguing wonder within the pyramid, the Queen's Chamber. For centuries, this room has left scholars and enthusiasts scratching their heads, trying to unravel its mysteries. Despite the royal-sounding name, many experts believe this chamber was never meant to be a queen's final resting place. There are no burial items inside. And the unique design has led to endless theories about what it was truly for. Situated at the heart of the pyramid, the queen's chamber is on a lower level than the grand king's chamber, but it has its special charm. To walk through the corridor is about 20 meters above ground level, leading from the towering Grand Gallery and arriving at this fascinating space. The chamber, with its lofty pointed roof, stretches upwards, giving the room a surprising sense of openness. 
it feels almost like the pyramid itself is rising above you. One of the most remarkable features of the Queen's Chamber is a large niche carved into the eastern wall. This niche, standing over 4.5 meters tall, has left many wondering about its purpose. The roof of this chamber is built using a special technique called corbelled layering, where stone blocks are stacked in a way that creates a triangular, upside-down V shape. This design is similar to what we see in the King's Chamber, hinting that it might have been chosen not only for its structural stability, but also for symbolic reasons. There's no doubt the Queen's Chamber holds its magic, making it a true mystery in the world of ancient architecture. Theories about the Queen's Chamber are as different as they are fascinating, each one adding more mystery to this ancient space. Some think it was used for sacred ceremonies related to the pharaoh's rebirth or spiritual renewal, with the niche possibly holding a statue or a symbolic object. Others believe that its special location and design could show the Egyptians' understanding of the universe. Alternatively, some say it might have had a more practical use, such as helping to spread the weight of the huge pyramid or holding the pharaoh's statue in a Sir Dab-like setup. In recent years, improvements in technology have brought us closer to solving these mysteries. Tools like infrared scanning and muon imaging, which let scientists look through solid walls without causing damage, have been used to study the chamber. These methods are helping researchers search for hidden spaces or clues about how the chamber was built and why it was designed that way. But the mystery doesn't stop with the queen's chamber. The air shafts, narrow tunnels carved into the stone, reach from the king's and queen's chambers to the outside of the pyramid, adding another puzzle to the mix. These shafts are far from ordinary. They were an amazing discovery, and their purpose is still widely debated. Their design, discovery, and the many ideas around them are a rich source of curiosity and wonder for archaeologists and historians alike. These air shafts are quite small, measuring about 20 by 20 centimeters, too narrow for anyone to squeeze through. They twist and turn with precision, reaching up toward the sky and aligning with areas that held great importance in ancient Egyptian beliefs about the cosmos. Discovered in 1872 by engineer Wayman Dixon, the shafts leading from the Queen's Chamber were a later addition to the pyramid's history, adding more layers to the enigma of this ancient marvel. Initially thought to be ventilation systems, this theory doesn't quite fit for the Queen's Chamber shafts, as they don't extend to the outside. Instead, the more popular theories take on a mystical flair. Some suggest that these shafts were aligned with stars or constellations, such as Orion and Sirius, creating a connection between the pharaoh and the gods of the afterlife. The intrigue continues as modern technology, including robotic cameras, explores these shafts, revealing hidden doors and chambers within. Of the Queen's Chamber of Commerce, Jack Friedman, and one of the biggest opponents, City Councilman. Deepening the mystery of what the ancient builders were really up to. Then, there's the subterranean chamber, a rough, unfinished space carved directly into the bedrock. Unlike the polished elegance of the pyramid's upper chambers, this one is full of raw edges and mysteries, hinting that it may have been abandoned during construction. Was it meant to be Pharaoh Khufu's original tomb, a symbolic link to the underworld, or perhaps even a practical feature like flood protection? Many theories exist, but the true purpose remains unsolved. The unfinished nature of this chamber has sparked all kinds of theories about what it was meant for and why it remains incomplete. Scientists uncovered a large space, often referred to as the Big Void. This exciting find is both thrilling and puzzling. The key to revealing this hidden area was a technique known as muon radiography. This method uses muons, tiny particles that naturally fall from the Earth's atmosphere. These particles can pass through solid stone, allowing researchers to peek inside the pyramid without drilling or damaging it. By measuring changes in the density of muons, scientists can locate voids like the newly found one. This discovery was made possible through international collaboration as part of the SCAN Pyramids Project, which united experts from around the world to investigate the secrets hidden within the pyramid. This big void lies above the Grand Gallery, another known space within the pyramid, and extends for at least 30 meters, about the same length as the gallery below. Its size indicates it was likely an important feature of the pyramid's design, yet its exact purpose remains a surprising mystery. The discovery of the big void opens up exciting new possibilities for exploration. 
Scientists are now considering advanced techniques to study this area more closely, such as drilling small openings for cameras without harming the pyramid structure. This void could offer invaluable insights into how the ancient Egyptians constructed such monumental structures and the reasons behind their unique designs. Each new finding within the Great Pyramid adds to our understanding of one of humanity's greatest achievements, the Osiris Shaft. The Osiris Shaft. The second level of the Osiris Shaft on the Giza Plateau. This is the ladder that goes up. Found along the route connecting the Sphinx to the Second Pyramid, immediately catches attention with its intricate design, a true symbol of ancient Egyptian engineering skill. This impressive structure spans three levels, smoothly combining practical use with a hint of mysticism. The Osiris Shaft is a marvel of ancient Egyptian skill and cleverness. Its detailed design shows the remarkable work of its builders. Look at the precision needed to carve these chambers directly into solid rock, showing a deep understanding of the land. As you approach the Osiris Shaft, you're greeted by a carefully crafted rectangular opening, marking the start of your descent. This isn't just any hole in the ground. It's a vertical shaft, carefully made to drop nearly 10 meters underground. Think about the immense effort needed to extract and shape the limestone using tools made from harder stones and metals, along with ropes and wooden supports. This work shows the advanced engineering skills of the ancient Egyptians. The first chamber, though not richly decorated or filled with treasures, gives off a quiet sense of purpose. It seems to serve as a preliminary space possibly for preparatory rituals or moments of thought before going deeper. But the real intrigue begins as you move to the second level. We're at the second level of the Osiris Shaft on the Giza Plateau. Logically, another shaft goes down an additional 20 meters, revealing a more detailed chamber. These shafts likely served as passages for burials or symbolic representations of the journey to the afterlife. As you explore deeper, the layers of mystery unfold inviting thoughts about the rituals and beliefs that shaped ancient Egyptian culture. The Osiris Shaft isn't just a marvel of engineering. It's a window into the fascinating and mysterious world of ancient Egypt. Going down to the third level marks an important moment in the exploration. As you go down another passage, you descend an impressive 30 meters underground. At the center of this room lies a large stone coffin, more than just a burial place, but a symbolic tribute to Osiris, the legendary figure of Egyptian myths. The room's partial filling with water from an underground source adds to its mysterious feeling, bringing to mind ideas of new life and cleansing that are deeply rooted in old beliefs. Each part of this building serves a different and mysterious purpose. Going further down reveals an amazing sight, a big stone coffin resting in a room that's partly underwater. Component placement. The scene vividly shows the old Egyptian underworld as if it was made right under our feet. It's like they made their idea of life after death hidden deep in the Giza Plateau. Local villagers and guides told him that he could find the tomb of a king buried deep beneath the Giza Plateau. Exploring deeper into this part finds six empty burial holes, a surprising discovery that confuses scientists. This find gives us an idea of ancient ways of burying and rituals, though many details are still not clear. Even though there are no writings that could have given us historical hints, things like pieces of pottery and stone fragments spread around tell us a lot. These old things take us back through time, suggesting that the Osiris Shaft likely comes from the time of the New Kingdom. While exploring grand monuments and temples in Egypt provides valuable historical insights, some of the most touching discoveries are the mummified remains found in smaller rooms around the central tomb. These preserved human bodies give us a deep connection to the people of ancient Egypt, allowing us to see their daily lives, diets, lifestyles, and even the circumstances of their deaths. The Osiris Shaft is named after the ancient Egyptian god Osiris, who is no ordinary god. Osiris is the god of the afterlife, death, and rebirth. According to legend, Osiris was betrayed by his brother Set, leading to a dramatic story of death, dismemberment, and eventual resurrection that could rival any epic movie. His devoted wife, Isis, carefully collected his scattered remains and performed rituals to bring him back to life. This story is central to Egyptian mythology, 
symbolizing the endless cycle of life, death, and rebirth. The Osiris Shaft stands as a three-dimensional tribute to this ancient story. Deep within its depths lies a room submerged in water, symbolizing the underworld. Think of standing before a huge stone coffin, representing Osiris's tomb, a deep symbol of his journey through death and his crucial role as the ruler of the afterlife. But why build such a place? One interesting theory suggests that the Osiris Shaft served as a site for initiation rituals. Think of it as a spiritual training ground where participants underwent symbolic trials, mirroring Osiris's ordeal of death and resurrection. These rites were not mere ceremonies. They were believed to impart hidden knowledge and speed up a spiritual change in those initiated. Some think that the Shaft's design was closely aligned with celestial bodies, reflecting the stars associated with Osiris and the afterlife. It seems the shaft was conceived as a link connecting Earth to the heavens, a physical representation of the soul's journey beyond death. What truly captivates is how the physical layout of the Osiris shaft and the items unearthed within Echo, with ancient Egyptian texts like the Pyramid Texts and the Book of the Dead. These texts explain the Egyptian view of the afterlife, filled with symbols of water, boats, and the deep meaning of coffins. The shaft itself appears like a stone version of these ancient writings, a tangible link to the beliefs and customs of a long-gone civilization written within the limestone of the Osiris shaft. Development of the Osiris shaft. The Osiris shaft has two entrances, one in the south and another in the north. Photos from a 2011 expedition into the Osiris shaft system show how the northern entrance has changed over time. In older images, the main entrance looks like a worn hole going into the bedrock, without any signs of being carved by tools. Next to it on the left was a second worn tunnel. Back then, the main entrance was about six feet tall, making it easy to access the underground tunnel. However, today, most of this entrance is blocked by a concrete wall, and the dip below it, visible in older photos, has been filled with sand, likely to hide the northern entrance from public view. The secondary tunnel on the left has also been filled and covered with sand. Recent visitors to the Giza Plateau who remember the site from earlier times have noticed these significant changes. What was once a large, obvious hole in the path is now mostly hidden by sand and modern construction. The difference between the past and present is striking, surprising many people who see the changes to this important historical site. This effort to block access suggests that the Osiris shaft was not originally meant for regular entry. There were no ladders or other easy ways to go down, as the ladders we see today were added later by archaeologists. Another interesting detail is why the builders chose to bring large granite boxes underground instead of simply carving burial chambers into the bedrock. Using lids alone would have been easier. Also, the sarcophagi are made from a different type of stone than the shaft itself and have no markings which makes us wonder about their true purpose. The shaft itself was carved directly from solid bedrock. And we looked at some of the first ever stone sarcophagi, like just very basic rectangular boxes. Without any stonework that could help date its construction. This lack of clues makes it hard to determine its age using regular methods. Stone dating techniques applied to these mysterious sarcophagi suggest they are extremely old with one made from a particularly unusual type of stone. It is estimated that each sarcophagus weighs around 40 tons, a significant weight to manage. There is the challenge of lowering these enormous objects with ropes and keeping them steady. It's hard to believe. They may have even used water in the shaft to help. If they made even a small mistake, the heavy sarcophagus could block the shaft entrance forever. But despite the huge risk, the builders seemed confident they could handle this tricky job in the tight space of the shaft. On the south wall of the second level, there's a huge black stone sarcophagus. Its surface has a thin layer of a sticky substance, which hints at something interesting underneath. When you look closer, you see a wide area under the sticky layer glowing white, a color usually linked with metals. This metallic layer is mostly made of lead, with some zinc, iron, titanium, and arsenic mixed in. This mixture makes us think the stone surface was treated or painted but we still don't know why this metallic layer was added. In the Osiris shaft, one striking feature stands out. 
a large gray coffin on the north wall. This coffin is undoubtedly the most fascinating object in the shaft. Its uniqueness lies in the material from which it is made. Using advanced X-ray technology, scientists determined that the coffin was made of a rock called dacite. This particular type of rock has never been discovered in any other ancient Egyptian artifacts, making this coffin truly exceptional. Geologists who study Africa and Egypt have noted that there are no known sources of dacite anywhere on the continent that could create such a massive coffin. This discovery implies that the coffin likely did not originate in Egypt, but was probably brought in from outside Africa, perhaps transported by sea from areas like Europe or the Black Sea. To pinpoint its exact origin, more research into rock deposits is necessary. Dacite is an igneous rock primarily made of feldspar and quartz, with tiny crystals that are only visible under a microscope, giving it a rather dull appearance. The nearest known dacite deposits are hundreds of miles away from the Osiris shaft. This significant distance shows the enormous challenges and costs involved in moving such a heavy stone, weighing over 40 tons across desert terrain, especially without a direct water route to Giza. The discovery of dacite in the coffin is just the beginning of the surprises. Further research revealed that the coffin dates back to around 3350 BC, which is approximately 800 and 150 years earlier than the widely accepted time for the construction of the Giza pyramids. This places it in the Old Kingdom, potentially nearly a millennium before Khufu and the Fourth Dynasty. This dating was achieved through a new technique developed by Professor Ionis Lytus, which measures when two pieces of rock were last exposed to light. His method allows for the direct dating of ancient structures and artifacts made from granite, basalt, and sandstone using a process called optical thermoluminescence. Take a look at a granite block before it is carved. Inside, there is a tiny granite crystal that captures electrons from surrounding radiation, filling tiny spaces known as electron traps. When the crystal is suddenly exposed to sunlight after being cut from the granite, the energy from the sunlight causes all the trapped electrons to escape their traps. Within hours, the crystal becomes devoid of electrons, with all traps cleared. Once it gets dark and the crystal is placed next to another granite block, it remains away from sunlight indefinitely. Over time, electrons slowly begin to fill the traps again due to surrounding radiation, a process that takes a long time. Professor Lytus referred to this phenomenon as the bleaching of the granite crystal by sunlight, likening it to resetting a stone clock to zero. When the crystal is again shielded from sunlight, electrons gradually fill the traps once more, resetting the crystal's clock. By counting the number of electrons in the crystal at any point after its last exposure to sunlight, scientists can determine how many years have passed since it was last bleached by the sun. This innovative method enables precise dating of the crystal and, consequently, the granite block it resides in. Underground tunnels. Beneath the Osiris shaft, Hidden tunnels might link to a vast maze of underground pathways beneath the Giza Plateau. On the third level, there's an area that looks like a tunnel, but it hasn't been fully dug out yet. It's fascinating to think why more hasn't been done to explore it. Similar shafts and structures in other places often lead to deep underground systems, so these tunnels are likely all connected too. Interestingly, the ancient Egyptians were known to explore many of these tunnels. Back then, Many of the shafts and tunnels didn't even have ceilings. There's even a story about someone who supposedly traveled underground from Saqqara to the Giza Plateau. Whether that's true or not is still up for debate, but what is certain is that there are kilometers of tunnels beneath these areas. For example, the tunnels at Tuna El Gebel stretch for about three kilometers, and if the tunnels under the Steppe Pyramid were laid out straight, they would run for around 56 kilometers. The Steppe Pyramid itself has five levels of tunnels beneath it, while the pyramids at Giza have three levels of underground passages. What makes this even more significant is that these tunnels aren't just random. They are carved into the bedrock and connected to the pyramids themselves, suggesting they were part of a larger design. When you descend into the first tunnel, you can see signs of wind erosion, and at the bottom, there's water. This tells us that the tunnels are at the same level as the Nile's water table. Since 2012, there have been efforts to pump the water out, but it keeps returning, likely because the area was once part of the Nile's course. The limestone bedrock here holds a lot of water, 
considering how easily they flood, it seems more likely that they were designed to control water flow rather than for travel. Still, the mystery of these ancient tunnels remains a fascinating puzzle waiting to be solved. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. After centuries of mystery, scientists finally unlocked a secret chamber hidden deep inside Egypt's Great Pyramid. For years, people believed the pyramid held secrets no one could uncover, but modern technology finally cracked the code. A group of researchers used advanced scanning equipment to detect a hollow space buried within the ancient stone structure. As they entered the chamber, the air felt thick with history. Dusty stone walls surrounded a mysterious golden chest covered in strange symbols. Inside the chest, they found a scroll written in a forgotten language. With the help of experts, they slowly translated it, discovering the scroll contained instructions to unlock even more ancient secrets, knowledge that had been buried for thousands of years. The discovery shook the world, raising new questions about Egypt's lost past. What other mysteries are waiting to be uncovered in the Great Pyramid? Let us know your answer in the comments section. A Journey Through History Graham Hancock is an interesting figure in the study of ancient civilizations, known for his thought-provoking books like Fingerprints of the Gods and Magicians of the Gods. His ideas often go against mainstream archaeology, focusing on the idea of a highly advanced civilization lost to history. According to Hancock, this ancient society knew architecture and maths far beyond what we usually give early human cultures credit for. A key part of Hancock's ideas is the Osiris Shaft, a complicated structure that he thinks could be a leftover from this lost civilization. Its detailed design points to advanced technological skills and deep cultural beliefs. Hancock believes the shaft might be older than traditional timelines suggest, or that it was built using knowledge passed down from this mysterious civilization. He also thinks the shaft's alignment might be linked to events in the sky or star patterns related to Osiris, symbolizing life, death, and rebirth in Egyptian mythology. Hancock's research hints that Egypt's monuments are part of a bigger cosmic plan, each adding to our understanding of the ancient past. The Osiris shaft, with its many puzzles, could tell us more about how our ancestors saw the universe and their search for spiritual meaning. A key idea in Hancock's theories is the concept of worldwide disasters, especially those caused by comet impacts between 12,800 and 11,600 years ago during a time called the Younger Dryas. He suggests that these huge events might have caused the fall of the advanced civilization he believes once existed. When he looks at the water that fills the lower levels of the Osiris shaft, Hancock sees more than just groundwater. He interprets it as a symbol of ancient floods, huge deluges that, according to his theory, had a deep effect on this lost civilization. Hancock believes these floods mark important moments in human history and argues that mainstream archaeologists have missed several ancient disasters that have been mistaken for natural events. He suggests that by studying these events, we might discover new information about our ancient past that has been ignored or rejected. In the 1990s, geologist Robert M. Schock introduced an interesting idea about the age of the Sphinx. He noticed strange patterns of erosion around the Sphinx and the surrounding area. Instead of the usual wind and sand erosion found in Egypt's desert climate, these patterns seemed to be caused by water. This led Schock to believe that the Sphinx might be much older than previously thought. Graham Hancock, known for challenging traditional historical views, found Shoka's theory fascinating and has supported it since the early 1990s. Most Egyptologists believe that the Great Sphinx is about 4,500 years old, even though there are no writings to confirm this date. However, independent researcher John Anthony West and Shoch strongly argue that the Sphinx might be much older. Hancock was especially drawn to Shoch's theory because it suggests the Sphinx existed during a time when Egypt had heavy rainfall, which could have been around 8,000 to 10,000 BCE. The idea that such rainfall could have caused the erosion seen on the Sphinx today is both interesting and controversial. Traditional archaeologists have long dated the Sphinx's construction to the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, based on its location in the Giza pyramid complex and comparisons with other objects from that time. However, Shok's idea challenges this timeline. 
He suggests that the Sphinx could be much older, possibly dating back to the Neolithic era when Egypt had more rainfall. If true, it would change how we understand ancient Egyptian history. According to Shoch, the Sphinx did not start with Khafre in the fourth dynasty. The erosion patterns on the Sphinx are unique, with deep cracks, wavy lines, and smooth, rounded shapes, which are more typical of water erosion than wind or sand wear. It's important to know that the Sphinx is made of limestone and is especially vulnerable to water damage. Shock noticed that the damage couldn't just be from wind and sand. It looked like water had played a big role. This discovery became even more exciting when Shock looked into the climate history of the Sahara Desert and the Giza area. He found out that between 10,000 and 5,000 BCE, this region wasn't the desert it is today. Instead, it was quite wet due to a time known as the Neolithic subpluvial phase, which brought a lot more rainfall, turning the area into a lush, water-rich landscape. What do you think about the secret chamber hidden inside Egypt's Great Pyramid that scientists finally unlocked? Share your opinion with us in the comments section.